Okay, okay so, so we, we are, are looking at our indice rules today. today. So, so let's just remind ourselves of what an indice is. Again, you can have your log tables open in front of you here as well. And the rules that we're going to be going over are in your book also on page 177. So either have your log tables open on page 2021. Page 21 or page 177 in your textbooks. So what do we mean by an indice or an exponent? It's just another word for it. So a number that's written in index form is in the form of b to the power of n, where b is your base, and n is either called the exponent or the power or the index. We usually use exponents when we're looking at really big numbers. Oh, thanks, Jade, I just saw that. Um, I'll make sure that you are not present. So we use um, exponents when we're writing really big numbers. So like 10 to the power of 16. So we're taking that value, 10, and we're multiplying it by itself 16 times. So your exponent simply tells you how many times you're multiplying a value by itself. Our exponential functions, we did this when we were looking at functions, so we're not going to spend much time on it. But an exponential function increases really quickly, and it will never go past or below the x-axis. So f of x is equal to, so your y value here is equal to 2 to the power of x. So that means we would have something like 2, y is equal to 2 to the power of 1, which is 2, 2 squared, 4, 2 to the power of 3, 8, 2 to the power of 4, 16. So your y value is getting really, really big very quickly. So it's a pretty fast incline. And it never goes past the or below the x-axis. So even if I have a negative number in here, that would just give me a quarter. 2 to the power of minus 2 gives you a quarter. It gives you a fraction. It's not going to be a negative value. So anytime you have your exponent and if your base is some positive number, your function will never go below the x-axis. As we change the base, you can see that the steepness of your graph increases. So the rate in which your graph increases You see your graph is much, much steeper. And if you have a power to the negative x, your graph is just going in the opposite direction. What you do need to know is that all of your graphs will pass through the point of 1 on the y-axis. So when x is 0, y will be 1. This is because a to the power of 0 is always equal to 1. So any base to the power of 0 will always give you 1. So your natural exponent is a value. It's kind of like pi. Like it's just a number that we use a lot. So your natural exponent is just a value. 2.718281828. Four five nine zero, and it is a recurring. It's an irrational number, so we call it e. Okay, so e. It's just a number, and we use it a lot when we're looking at exponential functions. We'll talk about that more later. Okay, so your exponential function increases very quickly. It goes has an intercept on the y-axis, so it crosses the y-axis at 1. And e is your natural exponential value. It's 2.71. You don't need to know what the number is. It's just a number. It's just a number that we use a lot in this topic. So it's an irrational number. That means it is 
There's lots of decimal places. Okay, so what we're looking at today is exponents and how we can simplify these using our exponent rules. We're not going to look at our function side of it today. You have done this previously when we looked at our function topic, but we're going to skip it for now and just look at our exponential rules. Okay, as we said, you have your power and you have your base. So here we're saying we're multiplying 5 by itself three times. So 5 to the power of 3, 5 times 5 times 5 gives you 125. Okay, you have lots of laws of exponents. So your first law is that the power n tells you how many times you are multiplying your value by itself. I.e. 5 to the power of 3 is 5 times 5 times 5. Okay, page 21 of your books, of your log tables. Let's go through the rest of our rules. These I want you to take down as we go. And um, I am recording this for you as well. Okay, any questions so far? I think everything so far is a bit of revision for you. I think it's things that you've done before. All right, your first law. So this is what we'll be doing today. We're going to simplify our exponents using our laws of indices or laws of exponents. With all of these, it's important that you have the same base. So your laws of exponents will only work if you have a common base. So in our case, our base we're calling A. So our first law, again, page 21. For this topic, you should have page 21, that page, page 21 off your log tables open at all times. You will constantly be referring back to these. It is important that you have them in front of you. So your first law, A to the power of P times A to the power of Q. To simplify this, you add together the exponents. So simplifying just means you're writing it as one indice or as one term. So if you are multiplying terms that have the same base, add the exponents together. I.e. x squared times x cubed gives you x to the power of 2 plus 3, which gives you 5. Your second law. A to the power of P divided by A to the power of Q. To simplify this, as long as you have the same base, we subtract our exponents from each other. So it's your numerator minus your denominator. So that would be like 3 to the power of 5 divided by 3 to the power of 2. So to simplify this, it would be 3 to the power of 5 minus 2, so 3 cubed. And if you want to go further, you can put that in your calculator, and that gives you 27. But mainly, we'll be leaving it in exponential form in this case. So really, we just go as far as here. Law 3, a to the power of p all to the power of q. So if you're powering a power, if you have 2 to the power of 3, all to the power of 6. So you're powering a power. In this case, you multiply your exponents together. This becomes 2 to the power of 3 times 6, or 2 to the power of 18. So if you're powering a power, you times your exponents together. Or 5 squared to the power of 4 equals 5 to the power of 8. Law 4, a to the power of 0 always gives you 1. So any value to the power of 0, it doesn't matter what it is, will always give you 1. So like anything to the power of 0, that number will always go to 1. 
If you have a negative exponent, you can write it as a positive exponent by changing it into a fraction. So this one, this one is quite useful. We use this one a good bit. A to the power of minus p is the same as one over a to the power of p. So that's like two to the power of minus three is the same as writing one over two to the power of three which gives us one over eight if we wanted to simplify it okay and it works the other way around as well if i had like two squared i can write that as Flip your exponent, 1 over 2 to the power of minus 2. Okay, when you have your fraction, so a to the power of a fraction. So this can be written and served for and vice versa. Usually you'll be given your value in third form and you have to change it into an exponent. So that would be like y to the power of a third equals cube root y. So whatever your q is, whatever your denominator of your fraction is, this is the value that goes in front of your third. Now a to the power of a half, this is used so much, we don't actually put the two in front. It's, it's just um, square root. root. So, so you don't actually need the two in front when your fraction is a half, when your indice is a half. That's like, sorry, four to the power of a half is the same as square root of four. Often in this question, you will be given your value in third form and you will have to convert it into an exponent. So you'll be told something like root 5 of 3. So this is 3 to the power of 1 over 5. Whatever this little value is here, that's the bottom of your denominator or the bottom of your fraction. Okay, so if you have a fraction where the numerator is greater than 1, so that's like a to the power of p over q, this simplifies to q root a all to the power of p. So as you can see here, you're changing your denominator into a third, but the numerator stays where it is. So, so if, if I, I had eight to the power of five over six, this becomes eight to the power of five and six root. So your numerator changes stays where it is and your denominator changes into your third. And your last rule okay anytime you're powering a times b to the power of p if you have two terms inside your brackets both of both of these must be powered by your exponent so this is a to the power of p times b to the power of p i.e x y to the power of three gives you x cubed y cubed and the same goes for even if your values are written as fractions. A over B to the power of P gives you A to the power of P divided by B to the power of P. I.e. 3 over 2 to the power of 4 gives you 3 to the power of 4 divided by 4 to the power of 4. Okay, so these are your rules. All we're doing today is making sure that we can change the form of our values using our rules. So I now want you to open up your books and go to page 178.
and 179. And we're going to start on question 10, then move on to question 12, 16 and 17. So for the next 15 minutes, I'm just going to continue doing these questions out. If you feel confident, it's really, I'm just using the exponent rules, I'm just doing more examples using the nine rules that I have here on the board. So you have 15 minutes. If you feel confident to do them on your own, you can log out now and continue with these. And if you want to do them with me, you can stay on and we will do them together. Okay, so if you want to log out now, that's fine. We are starting on question 10. Um, if you want to mute me, if you think that you can do them faster yourself, that's absolutely fine as well. Okay, so feel free. If you can do them faster than I can, go for it. Or faster than I will be doing them, I should say. Uh, go for it. You can log off now. Okay, otherwise we are looking at question 10. So in question 10, we're just going to simplify them. So let me just get off the page for you guys. Now these rules, I'm going to take them off the board now. Um, but you should have the rules open in front of you on page 21. I know I'm keeping myself.